Okay. Um, okay, I think I I joined everyone. It looks good. Oh, right, guys, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna talk quite quickly. Um, if you break up, uh, this is being recorded, so you can just. You can just um, go and watch it later if you missed something. Um, I also want you guys to, to if, if, if you want to follow what I say on your charts, just um, just unclick your, your auto scroll and zoom out a bit because I'm going to talk about dates that is a month or two back. Um, so it would be nice if you, can, if, if you can go back without your chart jumping forward the whole time. Um, and also a bit zoomed out so you can see exactly what levels I talk about um, but yeah I'm gonna move over to my chart um, and the first pair I can uh, the first pair we can really look at, look at is um, let's just take the pound US dollar so everyone can move to their pound US dollar charts and um, zoom it out a bit remove remove your auto scroll Remove your auto scroll and then just uh, go to yeah your pound US dollar. So what we're going to talk about is um, past support and resistance that will always be important levels in the future. Um, so your past support will turn into a future resistance, or a past resistance will be a future support. I base a lot of my trading on that. Um, and you will always find that levels to be quite important. So if you go to pound US dollar, you'll see that, well, the second last, well, third last big resistance we had was um, on the 9th of March. We had a resistance on the one hour chart. And then if you forward back to yesterday, there's the 18th when we had that big spike in the market last night uh, we again the price stopped around that level it's it wasn't precise but the previous resistance was around 1.513 and the new one was just above that at, let me just check the exact price was 1.516 so this is why Past support and resistance will never be the exact future support and resistance, but it's always close. It always ends up around the same level. Um, and you can base a lot of your training, uh, trading off there. Um, how you can, if you are looking for a C, if we're doing an ABC for, if you're looking for ABC formation, you can always count on your C being close to a previous support and resistance line. <clears throat> so, um, if we look at the 6th of March, it was a Friday, and then, the, and then again the 10th of March, there was two supports really close to each other. I don't know if everyone can see that. The price was... The price was around... 1.502 1.502 then the next the very next C bounced off that level again it was exactly on that level where it turned around and formed your C and went back down then on that down move again we had support at 1.489 and then again at 1.484 and that was now two days later then again for the second time our next C formed on that previous support again and made a future resistance let me just exit. So, um, it it really does happen 
all the time. Um, guys, if you if you can't get on, don't worry. This is recorded. <coughs> Okay. Cool. Good. So that is just a couple examples I want to look at and also just show you that it is never it's never the exact same levels that we get. It's always just very similar levels. Um I'm quickly gonna look here's a perfect example again. Um, if you guys move over to, if you guys move over to the US dollar JPY on a one hour chart, zoom it out a bit, remove your auto scroll and, um, move back, uh, move back a bit. In time and you will see that price formed. A resistance on the 17th of Feb. 17th of Feb, price formed resistance. Then again, on the 23rd of Feb, it stopped on that resistance again. Then again, on the 3rd of March, it stopped, but now it stopped from the upside and it formed a support. Uh, and then yesterday we broke very close to that level again. Again, not precise. It's not precise math. It doesn't stop on exactly that level. But you can, that's why I always call it a zone. Like a buy zone or a sell zone. is because that is where we can count on price topping and turning around. Um, can someone just type for Josh that it'll be up tomorrow? Um, I just want to go through this quickly. Um, we can also look at the Australian dollar, US dollar. Now, the same thing if you go to Australian dollar, US dollar, um, remove your auto scroll and um, zoom out a bit. Go to four hour chart. Four hour chart. Four hour chart is where is where we parked our car. Then you will see again, let's start looking at this one. On the sixth of Jan, the week of the sixth of Jan, price formed a support down at zero point eight zero two. Then it broke through after some after some up movement broke down then stopped on the same level now as a resistance so this time it's a resistance level again break broke down um, came back up and then the previous support now the support we made there on the week of the 6th of Jan 26th of Jan was at level was at level 0 0.785 then that level turned into a resistance just above that on the 2nd of Feb that level again on the week of the 17th of Feb and the 24th of Feb turned into resistance again but you see the levels are never precise it is never precise levels. It is always a bit above, a bit below. So it's never a precise science. It is just close. Um, that ended up then being about well, a double head and shoulders here. The, then again on the 3rd of March, it turned into resistance again. So this was all of one previous support level that turned resistance, turned resistance, turned resistance the whole time and then yesterday again when we had that uh, big up movement um, the, uh, again it stopped around the same level 
if you also look at the bottom supports around the 771 level 0 0.771 and 0 0.773 you see the same thing again it's the whole time coming into the same zone same zone same zone and moving up and down from there so never never think that a previous support could be a exact future support or exact future resistance it is always it is never exact it will always be a bit higher a bit lower remember it's it's also what we talked about um on false breaks that it will, it will never be the exact price unless it happened in the same day or the same week. But over a couple of weeks, it will come back to the same level, around about plus minus 50 pips. And now the thing is, um, a, a lot of people will enter orders on exactly, exactly that level of the previous support or previous resistance. And then if the price goes against them for 20 pips or so, they'll stop out. But what you must look at that it is never exactly the same price so you want to see something else on that line as well you would want to see a, f a Fibonacci level if you see a, a 61.8 Fibonacci level on a previous support or on a previous resistance then go for it you would have your three reasons to take that trade um, but never use it as an exact science I quickly want to jump to another chart let's just check um, I'm just gonna use the Euro JPY, Euro Japanese. Um, if you also again on the Euro JPY, remove your auto scroll and um, zoom out a bit so you can see a lot more of the picture. Um, I can actually see a year we have brilliant, brilliant levels. Um, let's just take the very first one, the big resistance point we made yesterday. That was actually on a 61 or just above a 61.8 fib um, is the resistance we made yesterday. The price there was um, 131.73. That is what we had a resistance point on yesterday. If you draw your fib also, um, I think it's a fib on a daily or fib on a 4 hour. It's just above the 61.8. Um, now that level, that level actually bounced off a previous uh, resistance level that was that was on the tenth tenth of March, and that level was actually established on the ninth of March. That same price made a resistance next day made a resistance just a little bit higher so we could call that um, a false break but not really it always is never the same price then yesterday it bounced off exactly that same level um, and then if we look at the resistance just the day before that on the 17th of March the resistance level was at 129 129.17 um, that also came from the resistance just before that on the 12th of March, uh, 13th of March, and it was a support initially. The support was on the 10th of March. So there we have support, turned resistance, not a precise level, uh, turned resistance, turned resistance. Okay, then if I just move a little bit back, I can see again we had a resistance on the 5th of March the resistance was at price 13353 133.53 we had a resistance um, now that resistance came from the support that was made on the 3rd of March that came off a support that was made the 27th of Feb and that came off a support that was made the 20th of Feb and that came off a support that was made the 9th of Feb. Also, all not precise levels, out a couple of pips. 
but it's exact it's it is very very close so that is actually support 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 resistance brilliant levels then just the resi the, the next or well, the previous resistance we had was on the 2nd of March that was priced in at about 134.57 now on 134.57 we had a resistance just that resistance came off a support that was on the 20, 24th of Feb also not exact the same exact price level it was a bit down then so that is again support turn resistance it's just um, all over the place and there's just one thing you need to rem to rem always remind yourself that it is not an exact level it's an estimate you know price would turn around that level some way but you can never count on it being exactly on that level sometimes it is exact but not it's I, would, I wouldn't go for the exact exact price I am actually just saw now when I scrolled back that support and resistance actually came from a support all the way back on the 15th of January it made a support on there again and if I look at January now, the 27th of January we had about one, two, three, four, five support levels all within within a small pip range so it never stopped on exactly the same level but the whole time it was all within a couple of pips the 27th of Jan then the 28th of Jan, then the 30th of Jan, then the 3rd of Jan, then the 4th of Jan. Every time it just came back down to that same level. Um, I'm going to move over just to my next chart which is the US dollar South African Rand. And let's look, let's look here. Okay, well over the last week it broke out quite a lot but let's move back a bit to the big support we had on the 5th of March the 5th of March we had quite a big support it was at level 1172 11 around 72 cents now just if you put a horizontal line there you can see that support came from a resistance on the 23rd of Feb. And that resistance came from a resistance from the 18th of Feb. And that resistance came from a resistance on the 10th of Feb. And it was it was just carried over, carried over, carried over, stopping on the same level. So okay, if I go back, I don't see anything else on that level. But um, our biggest support just before that was at eleven thirty six. Now we had we had buy we had we had some buy orders uh, around that level, uh, around the eleven thirty six level. Um, now if you look at that 1136 support that support came from a support on the 3rd of Feb so it was the 3rd of Feb it what made a support there then again on the 26th of Feb we had a support there but that support on the 3rd of Feb came from the 22nd of January we had a support on that same level and I'm pretty sure if I go back, I would find another one on there, but uh, which I'm not going to do now. Um, so, um, all all I'm trying to do is I'm, I'm trying to show you guys that um, previous levels, historic levels, where price went, 
in the past is a very, very extremely good indication of where it will go in the future. I mean, that is... And, yeah, exactly. They, they respect each other. Um, like, Werner has been trading for a while, and I don't know if he was trading price... Well, I think he was trading price action, and he, he knows this as well. And a lot of people um, I teach that would, was trading indicators before and were only relying on indicators, they, they get converted to price action. It's like changing religion because they actually see that it makes sense. Um, and I'm, I'm not even going to go look for further examples. All I, all I really want to... But if, if, you watch, if you watch this recording tomorrow or the day after you will see exactly what levels I was pointing at. And you'll also see um, in the newsletter, most of the time when I give it, given a, a sell, a sell a exact sell price, um, it will be on a big previous support or a big previous resistance that is on a 61.8 Fibonacci or so. If I give a sell zone, then it means there was lots of support and resistances in that area, it was never an exact price, but it was in that area there was a lot of support resistance, support resistance, support resistance. Because then you never know what the exact price will be. You just know it will be there. Um, except if we have fundamentals that came out yesterday and completely went through all the levels. Um, but only on a technical level, that is where you want to be. Um, fundamentals aside, that is what's gonna do. That is what's gonna do the best. Um, yes, and that's. Please watch the recording again if you want to see the levels I was talking about. But um, yeah, if there's any questions, you guys can shoot them now.